I've been getting a lot of questions about my weather dashboard, so I thought it would be time to make a full tutorial from start to finish about how I've created it. I have a few other videos about weather as well, but I understand it can be confusing if you have to watch multiple videos to create the whole thing. As always, the full code can be found on the Gumroad link in the description. To create this, you will need button card from Hacks. I also use local conditional card and gap card. First, I'm going to start creating a full template sensor. This will give us all the different data that I want to use. As you can see, I've linked all my template sensors to a file called template.yaml. This way I can keep them all in one place and it's a little more organized. I'm going to start by creating a trigger. This trigger will fire every hour and when Home Assistant starts. Then I can add the first action. This will store the current weather into a variable that we define in the action. I just call this variable hourly. We can test this action by going to the dev tools and running the get forecast action. What we get in return is what will be stored in the variable and we can then decide what we want to save into our template sensor. Then I will also add an action for the daily forecast. This will give us a 5 day forecast as well as a more general forecast of today. I will store this into a variable called daily. Then we can start creating the actual sensor that we can use in our dashboards. I first give it a name and unique ID. I just set the state to the current time. I then create a bunch of attributes. I try to keep this as organized as possible, so I split the attribute names into sections where I add prefixes like now, today, and fork for forecast. In my previous weather videos I've gotten a few questions about how to translate the condition into other languages, and I think I've found a nice solution now. I use something called a Jinja macro. This is sort of a function that we can reuse many times in our templates. For this example I am referencing a file called weathertranslate.jinja and this file looks like this. You can see that I've translated all the possible weather conditions into Norwegian and then at the end it will display the variable state that we pass into it from the template sensor. To get this working, we just have to create this weathertranslate.jinja file inside a folder called custom underscore templates in our config folder. If you just want to use the English weather condition, you can use this code instead. The other thing I've been getting a lot of questions about is the animated icons. It's very important that the SVG files are named correctly and that they are placed in the correct folder. You can see in this code that I place them in my local forward slash weather folder. Local actually means www. On the screen you can see all the icons I have. There's a total of 30 icons. I have one for daytime and one for nighttime. The nighttime ones have underscore night at the end of the file name. The reason for naming the SVG files like this is because we use the weather condition to reference the icons. Therefore the icons will change if the weather condition changes. And lastly, you can see from this Jinja code that I use the normal icon if the sun is above the horizon and the nighttime icon if it isn't. I'm just gonna jump in from the future for a second. I thought it would be handy to show in detail the next Jinja code. Most of the other ones are similar to this. You can see that I first grabbed that hourly variable of the weather integration from the action at the top. If we just run this action in DevTools, you can see the structure of the response. We need to tell it to grab forecast. So we add dot forecast. Then, in the response again, we can see that the response is structured into an array and we want to grab the first one. So we need to add zero into square brackets. Next, I want the temperature. So we add that after the zero, also with a dot, and that's it. We can use this same code to grab all the other data that we don't need to alter. For the wind speed, I will use the same code, but divide it by 3.6 to get meter per second instead of kilometer per hour. The wind bearing, precipitation, precipitation probability, and humidity is exactly the same as the temperature code. The feels like temperature is a bit more advanced, and I have a separate video just about this. I use the same formula that the Norwegian Meteorological Institute uses. I don't actually display the wind direction in my dashboard, but I may as well keep it in here. The code essentially maps the wind bearing to one of the 16 compass directions. The addition of 11.25 degrees and division by 22.5 degrees ensures that each direction covers its intended range. The wind description is similar to the very first condition code I showed. I use a Jinja macro to calculate the wind speed into a written description. This macro takes a wind speed as input and returns a description of the wind condition. We're done with the hard stuff now, the rest will be mostly copy and paste. I want to also grab a general forecast for today, 
So instead of using the hourly function of the get forecasts action, I use the daily one. So we could basically just copy every attribute we've already done and change the hourly variable into the daily one. The only difference is that I don't want the icon to change into the nighttime icon, so I've simplified the code to remove the if else function. When that's done, I'll start adding attributes for the five days of forecast. I don't need as much data, but it's nice to have the condition, an icon, temperature, and precipitation. I also need the date so that I can add the related day in the dashboard. I basically just use the same Jinja code again. The daily action returns six array items. We used zero for today's forecast, so we need to use one, two, three, four, and five for the future forecast. So when we've created the attributes for tomorrow's forecast, we can just copy paste the attributes and change the numbers accordingly. This is probably the biggest template sensor I've ever created. We need to make sure there are no gaps in between the attributes. When you're happy, go to DevTools and Home Assistant and check the YAML configuration. If it's all good, do a restart. When Home Assistant is back up and running, you can go into the States tab and search for the new sensor. Hopefully it should show up with all the attributes. Finally, we can start making the weather dashboard. I'm gonna start by creating a new vertical stack. Depending on your setup, you might not need this. For example, if you use bubble card pop-ups, you will already have a vertical stack, so you can just use that. Then I'll add a horizontal stack. This is because I want to conditionally show two different cards, current and today's forecast. I'll then add a local conditional card and give it an ID of weather now. I don't understand why, but for whatever reason, I had to add a grid with one column to the local conditional card. Otherwise, nothing would show. Then finally, I'll add the custom button card. I'll use the full code editor while I work on this. It makes it a bit easier to see. I'll start by adding the template sensor as an entity. Then I'll hide the icon, name, and label. I will only be using custom fields for this. The first custom field is just a static text element. Then I'll add the condition. We can add this by returning the entity attribute called now underscore condition. The wind is the same. Just change the attribute to now wind desk. The rain is almost the same. Change it to now precipitation. But after I'm gonna add a plus sign and two apostrophes, inside I'll write MM for millimeter. The icon is different. If we just return the icon attribute, it would just print the file path, so we need to use some HTML to display the icon. We need to add the HTML code inside apostrophes. So let's write a less than sign to open the HTML code. IMG SRC equal and one quotation mark. Then, outside the apostrophes, we add a plus sign and call the entity attribute. After that, we again use a plus sign and apostrophes. Inside, we add one quotation mark. This finishes the SRC path. I then want to add a width and height of 240 pixels. Lastly, we can close out the HTML code with a greater than sign. If you did it correctly, the icon should show up. If it doesn't, there's either something wrong with the custom field code, the template sensor, or the file path. Last custom field is the temperature. Similar to the first custom fields, but I also want to add the feels like temperature in the same custom field. Between the two entity attributes, I add a degree sign, and I also add some HTML code to make the feels like temperature much smaller. This will make sense a little later. Currently, all the custom fields are stacked on top of each other. So let's fix that by defining a grid and making it look nicer. I'm making a three x four grid. First row will be desk. We need to write it three times so that it covers all columns. Second row will be the icon. Third row is the temperature. And the fourth row will be the condition, wind, and rain. I then set the size of the columns to be min content, min content, and 1fr. The row sizing isn't really important. I give the whole card 24 pixels of padding. Then we can start styling all the custom fields. I add justify self start to all fields except for the icon and I want a fairly big font size for the temperature. I set it to 4 EM, font weight to 300 and line height to 1 EM. Then I add padding right of 12 PX to wind and rain. And you can see that I forgot to add the con styling. So that's the finished card for the current weather. Now I wanna make exactly the same card for today's weather. But first I add a tap action to this card so that we can toggle between this and today's weather. With local conditional card, we can show and hide the IDs that we have defined. And you can see that if I click the card, it should hide it. Now we just need to copy this card, including the local conditional card, and edit the ID and the entity attributes. 
I'm just going to fast forward through that process because you only need to edit the custom field attributes. Then when done, edit the tap action and set the default state of the local conditional card to hide. Now we can toggle between the current and today's weather. Let's start making a card for the future forecast. I'll start by just adding a small gap, then I'll add the usual custom button card. Same as before. I'll add the template sensor as the entity and hide the icon, name, and label. Again, I'll use custom fields. The first one I call cond. I'll first just return the condition attribute. And I use the plus sign and apostrophe to add the precipitation as well. I add a simple HTML code in between the two attributes to move them away from each other. Next one is going to return the day for the forecast. Button card have some great helpers that can format dates for us. I use the one that just returns the weekday. Here we just replace the date variable with our entity attribute. The temperature is the same as we've done multiple times now. And the icon we can just copy from the first card we created. I just want to change the width and height to 90 pixels. Let's set up the grid. I do a 3x3 three three grid, but I see now that I could have made it as a two column grid instead. So instead of what I'm doing here, you could just create the grid as day icon, temp icon, and cond icon. This means day, temp, and cond will be on top of each other while the icon wraps the full height. I give the whole card a padding of 24 pixels. And because of my theme file, I add a 12 pixel bottom margin. You might not need this. Then con, day, and temp will have justify self set to start, while the icon will be end. Lastly, I just set the temperature font size to 3 EM and font weight to 300. Now we just need to copy this card and paste it four times while we make sure to edit the attributes each time. And that's it, my full weather dashboard from start to finish. Girlfriend loves this because it's quick and easy to see the temperature and condition. It takes up a fair bit of vertical space, so if you want to make it smaller, you can just edit the icon and font sizes. To build on this, you could, for example, add a weather radar card to a third local conditional card. I personally don't need it, but I know there's a lot of people that use those. I've been getting a lot of questions about different aspects of this, so I thought it would be nice to make a full tutorial. It will probably turn into my longest video so far. Anyway, thanks for watching. Check out some of my other videos and consider becoming a channel member to get access to the awesome Discord channel. Until next time.